Today, I'm so excited to be talking about Girls Camp. Now, what is Girls Camp? So Girls Camp is a multi-day sleepaway camp hosted by the LDS Church for girls ages 12 to 17. In my experience, usually it's younger girls because by the time you're 16, you've done it a couple times and you're like, fuck this, I do not wanna go be in the woods and be told what to do or like you've got like cheerleading or dance or like better commitments. So the goal of Girls Camp is to teach women. This is from LDS.org, so let me read it off to you. Self-reliance, group bonding, service, and strengthen a relationship with God. Now, in my opinion, this all sounds really good, um, but that's not what it is. <laughs> also, I feel like it would be less boring of a video if I made Jello while I spoke, but I've never made Jello because it's disgusting, but... There's a first time for everything. All right, it says I need two cups of boiling water. Well, I guess I have to make boiling water. This is stupid. One important detail is that there is state girls camp and there is ward girls camp. My first year I went to state girls camp and my second year I went to ward girls camp. Now state girls camp is when it's like all the girls from like multiple neighborhoods. It's, it's almost like a school district when it's state girls camp. But when it's ward girls camp, it's just like your neighborhood. So maybe it's like 50 girls versus, and I mean, that would be a big ward. But if it's steak, it's like hundreds of girls. When it's steak girls camp, it's more strict. Most of the stories I'm gonna tell today are from steak girls camp because steak girls camp sucked so fucking bad. Um, but ward girls camp was actually pretty fun. It's just kind of up to like the people running the groups, you know? But that's kind of all things. Another iconic girls camp moment is that you have to have like two priesthood holders there the whole time, which are basically just um, men over the age of 15 because women can't do it ourselves. Oh, also quick sidebar. I don't mean this to be offensive to LDS people. I just think it's funny. I'm going to read you the daily routine of a girl's camp. 7 to 7.30 a.m. Travel to camp or wake up at camp. In my memory, we woke up so early, but I digress. 7.30 to 9 a.m. Prepare and serve breakfast. Clean up after meal. Okay, but you can't forget like the 40 minute prayer before breakfast and the there was singing before breakfast, trust. Then nine to 9.15, morning devotional. Hymn, scripture, prayer. Yeah, that's pretty on point. Um, 9.15 to 9.30, make announcements for the day, activities, assignments, safety, good. 9.30 a.m. to noon, participate in activities. Learn about water purification, first aid, and emergency shelters. I'll be real, I do not remember learning that. But this might be like the kids in high school who are like, oh, I wish we learned about finances when literally you learned about finances, but they're the kids who would like walk to the gas station during school. So maybe I'm giving that right now. But also I think I'm not because I think we just did fucking crafts the whole time. Noon to 1.30, prepare and serve lunch. Clean up after the meal, period. Except you forgot like the 20 minute prayer before lunch. It's a lot of praying. Um, 1.30 to 2.30, have quiet time for scripture study, meditation, journaling on a specific topic or theme. That's accurate. We did so much journaling. 2.30 to 5 p.m., this is where you get to do like fun stuff like games, swimming, races, nature hike. Um, also checked out. I feel like that was like always my favorite part. We got to do, especially when we went only as a ward, we got to do so much fun stuff. Dinner, but you forgot the whole 40 minute prayer before dinner. Then 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. present a talent show. Oh, oh my fellas. Some nights you would get to do like a talent show or you'd watch a movie, a church approved movie, like Once I Was a Beehive or something made by the LDS church's film industry. There was always a skate competition, which was my hustle. We'll get to that later. And then 7.30 to 9 p.m. hold evening devotional and testimony meeting. And I remember this being the worst because you've just had like the longest day. You've been forced to like go on all these hikes, do these nonstop activities. You've cried like four times because there's emotional manipulation happening and you're like 12 years old. And then it's like the end of the day, you're exhausted. You're in your cabin. You hear a knock on the door and it's your leader like, it's time for nighttime devotional. And you're like, oh my God, I just want to go to bed. And they come in with a folder and then it's like prepared with like, a story, a scripture, and then everybody has to go around and give their two cents on the little scripture. And it's so painful. Is my water boiling? Oh, it is. Let's go. Everybody has to give their two cents on this like random ass scripture. There's a prayer, there's a song, and it takes forever and you're tired. I just remember every time my skin was like crawling. I was like, I wanna sleep. So I think I just stir this until it's dissolved. Oh, okay. And then 9.30 to 10 p.m., get ready for bed and the adults meet and prepare for the next day. So that's a typical day. I feel like that's actually pretty on par. Now you get the gist of what girls camp is if you didn't grow up LDS like me.
I noted some of the traditions that you always do at girls camp that like are pretty much across the board like everybody remembers. And some of these are actually really fun. You have cute things like there was this thing called snipe hunting and it's basically like a prank that the older girls do on the younger girls. And I remember this being so much fun my first year. The older girls were like, tonight we're going snipe hunting. And they convinced us that they're like badgery things and you catch them in pillowcases and it's super fun. So we're all hyped and they're like, you have to put toothpaste all over your face, otherwise they'll bite. And so we're all putting toothpaste over our face. We're all going out in the woods with flashlights and the older girls had sprayed like glow stick all over and they're like, yeah, they're poo glows in the dark. They just pretend to find them and they're like shaking their pillowcases. Like that is fun. There's this one girl <laughs> and she was like, it's so funny. She just grew up a little slower than like everybody else. And she cried really hard at snipe hunting and then it wasn't allowed the next year. <laughs> There's also like Secret Sister, it's just Secret Santa. Um, but when you're doing Secret Santa with girls from the ages of 12 to 17, somebody always gets something shitty and it turns into somebody crying and the leaders having to like replace something. But that was still fun. I'm not going to unnecessarily knock on things that were cool and fun because that is the worst, okay? My second year, we actually did lots of service, which is kind of what you're supposed to do on this. Um, we literally like went and volunteered at the food bank and Habitat for Humanity. And I feel like that was like so helpful and inspiring. And I kind of walked away from it being like, why, don't, why didn't we do this last year? Last year was just weird. Um, so I was really grateful that we got those experiences, but I was like, why? Why is it not more of this? Like, don't you think it's more beneficial for 13 year old girls to be building houses for the needy rather than doing some weird cult shit? But maybe that's just me. Oh, also please note, we did so many damn crafts. For me, I love crafts, so I was all over it. We were doing tie dye, tying the balloons on the flip flops. I feel like there was like knit bracelet making. Oh, braids. We'd braid little things into our hair. Every Mormon girl can braid hair and it's because of that experience, I swear to God. I'm doing jello because it's like a Utah thing and I think it's funny. Um, I remember there always being weird floaty chunks in jello and one of the weird floaty chunks was always mandarin oranges or like these weird ass marshmallows. So that's what I decided to do today. <laughs> this is gonna be so gross. But then there were the weird traditions that girls camp has, like campfire songs are fun until they're fucking weird. Let me play you one. So half of them are just about getting married and having babies with a return missionary. <laughs> getting all the chunks, I think is really important to this recipe. I don't know why people like Jell-O. It's pretty heinous, I'd say. I think actually Jell-O was like so cheap. It's like $1 for this whole container and this container will probably feed like a family. So maybe it's just because when you're um, LDS, you have to feed 50 people at one time at a family function. So this is pretty convenient. And it has one gram of protein. I want to play you one more song just because this one was really funny too. So yeah, basically you'd sing like lots of chants that are just about um, getting married because that's kind of like your only point as a woman, right? But also there were just a lot of things that were like weird and meant to put you in an uncomfortable situation and then be like, well, obviously you need to pray to get out of this uncomfortable situation, but it's like a manufactured uncomfortable situation. Time for the trial of faith. It's like the main activity of camp. Imagine a Sunday school lesson taught by Indiana Jones. I was on Reddit and this girl was talking about how she went hiking with her group on like a really long hike. And the leader said that they had packed snacks and then they got to the point where they were supposed to pull out snacks and they're like, oh, we don't have them. And some of the girls started being like really dramatic. I mean, it's, it's emotional 13 year old girls. They start freaking out. The leaders are like really leaning into it. And then one girl is like, guys, we have to pray. And that's what will fix it. And so she goes on this like whole emotional prayer thing and then the leaders are like, good job, that's what we wanted to do. The food is actually over there, we hid it from you. I read that and it really spoke to me because I felt like a lot of my experiences were like similar. Sorry, this video is hard to make because this is like an uncomfortable topic for me, but I feel like it's worth talking about. <laughs> oh 
oh my god this is such a mess okay so let's get into my personal experiences with girls camp so just to reiterate i went twice once when i was 12 and that was the steak one that was like ridiculous and then again when i was 13 it was a ward girls camp and it was Pretty fun, I like had a good experience because I think I was lucky enough that I had pretty normal leaders. Like I said, I think girls camp can be a great opportunity for girls to make friends, to get outside. Um, I'm trying to come up with more reasons it's good and it's kind of hard. One of my favorite, favorite memories is we were doing a craft. <laughs> in cutesy gel pen, we had to make a list of things we're looking for in a husband. I was 12 and you had to order them and order of most important to least important. And then we had to go around the room and share. And then I was like, uh, funny, nice. <laughs> and then we started going around the room and every single person was like, return missionary. And I was like, fuck, fuck, I messed it up. I forgot to say that. They're gonna know, they're gonna know that I'm not good at church. Uh, I just uneventfully popped the jello into the fridge. It should be done in like four hours or something. I don't know. Sorry, that wasn't very entertaining visually. <laughs> another classic moment was for another craft. We had to, in those same gorgeous gel pens, we got copies of Book of Mormons and then we had to write our testimony in the front cover and then our journey was when we got home, we had to give it to somebody who was a non-member or who is inactive or somebody who you think is really straying from the iron rod. This activity was fun until somebody gave one to me like the next year. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. Like I said, the skits were one of my favorite things about girls camp because especially steak, you can do like 20 groups from all these girls and all these wards. Basically, it's like a competition and there's a winner and you get to perform in front of all these people and they're supposed to be silly and I was so excited. And then I find out that these have to be related back to the Book of Mormon somehow. And let me tell you, I was so pissed. I get in there and I'm like, this is my idea. We're gonna do this and this and this. And they're like, no, because it has to be related to church. And I was like, fuck. This sucks so bad. Oh, and get this, on top of that, I have to play the fucking dad. So you know what I said? My diva ass says, then I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> and I just walked into my cabin and I was like, I'll just sit this one out, guys. And this older girl, she's a, uh, I think she was like 16, which means you're like top dog, you're a YCL, you're a counselor to the younger girls. She storms in my cabin, throws open the door, and she's like, hey, are you seriously in here whining because we're not gonna do the skit you wanna do, bitch? And I'm just like, oh, she's like, so you can make the choice to participate and have fun and do what we're here to do at girls camp, or you can cause drama and sit in here and be a whiny baby. And then she runs out and slams the door. <laughs> and I was so gagged that I literally ran out the back door of the cabin through the woods until I found like a first aid station and I get to this first aid station and I'm like, I wanna go home. I started my period, I have to go home. I've never done it before and I just need to call my mom. She needs to come get me. And the nurse is literally like, oh, well, I have just the thing. This nurse hands me a pad, a pad the size, a pad the size of a fish you'd be proud to catch. And it's, it's girthy. She hands it to me and she's like, this should solve it. If you need more, let me know. And I'm like, I can't call my mom. And she's like, These, that's what you do. Just let me know if you need pads. I've got an unlimited supply. Soldier on. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that had to work. So I go in the bathroom and I stick on my fake diaper and my leader comes in and she's like, oh, so you wanna call your mom? And I'm like, yeah, I just started my period and I don't know what to do. And she's like, well, that's okay. We've got like the pads and everything. So I'm like thinking on my feet. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta call my mom. So I run back into the bathroom and I'm like, I like get my face messy. I, I flush, I come out. I'm like, I just threw up too. I'm on my period and now I'm throwing up. I have to call my mom and go home. And basically my, my leader from my ward sits me down and she's like, Tyler. So basically I know you're not fucking sick and it would take me half an hour to drive you to where there's service so you can call your mom. Can we please just get through this camp? Except she said it in like a really nice way, but also like guilt tripping way. So I was like, stay through the camp. I don't get to call my mom. I have to stay through the camp. She totally called my bullshit, but like in the most nice Mormon way you've ever seen in your life. Now I wanna get into 
the more weird shit that makes me resentful of Girl Scout. <laughs> this activity, I feel like we did it every year. We even did it in like Sunday school too. And it's weird. They basically go in the forest, a bunch of yarn, and they wrap it around the trees and they make a big, huge maze. And you go from start to finish and you have to follow it and make sure that you're going the right way and you're blindfolded. And this represented the iron rod, which is basically like doing what you're supposed to do in church. Like following the iron rod means like being a good, righteous person and doing what the church tells you to do. So this is like symbolic. You're following it with your eyes eyes closed and the gag is that the <laughs> counselors come around and like whisper in your ear like oh go left go right and they're supposed to be satan tempting you the wrong way or they'll be like oh you're finished and you could be like yes i win but then you're like oh no i don't i just got tempted by satan right i did see on reddit people have like really crazy fucked up versions of this game where like they'd be following it and the, their leader would be like your mom's in the hospital <laughs> Now that did not happen to me, which I'm so grateful for, but I think the concept of the game is still kind of weird and I don't remember it being fun either. <laughs> this is another classic. We would do testimony meetings. We'd get around the fire with a talking stick and usually the leaders would start and they'd say something about the day that just like really changed their belief or something in life or something from like a Bible or scripture quote and what it means to them and their devotion to Da, 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 da. and it always ended in tears. It was almost like a mass hysteria kind of thing like in the Salem witch trials because like if you weren't in mass hysteria, you were othered. For me where my family was like not good Mormons, I was usually go pass <laughs> and I felt so bad about it. But I think my second year I bought into the hysterics and I was like, <gasps> yeah, I'm with you guys, I love you guys. But it's like so awkward if you say pass. I think it was like me and one other girl and I was like, this is torture, pass. Cause what the fuck am I gonna say? Steak camp sucked so bad. Have I not said that enough times? But when you have like 400 girls, you have people who have like no training and like logistics planning it, kind of just guessing. So we ran out of food and I remember they started using hot dogs in such creative ways. They were in like the breakfast and it was lunch and it was dinner and they just started getting so creative with it. And I'm a picky eater. So I started just only eating granola bars for the entire time. And then everybody else started vomiting. Like everybody everybody was sick and that was just such a crazy experience because you've got like two to four hundred girls sick as dogs in and half of them are intense half of them are in cabins half of them are intense could you imagine i don't know how they failed on that one the church has like a billion dollars they were hiding from everybody you couldn't have used that to feed your <laughs> I'm, I'm stopping i'm stopping before it gets too aggressive so we do activities like in the hot of summer, like it gets hot in Utah in the summer. So it was hot, but I remember my first year you were allowed to wear shorts, but they had to be like knee length shorts, which every Mormon girl has a pair of ugly ass knee length shorts. So we all brought those. But then the second year we got a note saying you couldn't wear shorts anymore. You had to wear long pants. So we're in the mountains in the summer wearing long pants all because somebody felt like somebody's shorts were crossing the boundary of what's proper knee length and what's not proper knee length. So we all had to wear pants in the woods in the summer. I was so pissed. The length of your shorts was so controversial back in the day. Now I wanna share the craziest experience that I've ever had. Not only girls camp, but like legitimately just one of the weirdest things that I've ever been through in my entire life. Okay, so this is year one, I'm 12 years old. We're at state girls camp, so many girls. And we do this activity where you have a passport booklet kind of thing with little activities that you're supposed to complete throughout the day. So one activity is like, go say a prayer. And then you go say a prayer and it gets checked off at the prayer station. And then another activity is like, go do scripture study. And so you go to a station where you have to do a scripture project. There's one about, you know, like family where you plan a family activity, going to church. These are all examples of things that you're supposed to do to get to heaven. We thought it was just a game. So we're checking these all off. It's the end of the day. We've all completed our booklets and we go to like this gathering area. We all line up with our completed booklets and they check them at the gates of this stage. And if you're passed off, you get a walk in and all the men that were at the camp are dressed as angels and they shake your hand and give you a hug as you're walking into heaven. And it was decorated like heaven, by the way. So we hug all the angels. We walk in, take a seat. They're playing like weird angelic music. Like it's 
weird vibes. And then once all the girls have like passed off their booklets, hugged their angels, got into the weird creepy cold thing, some of the leaders do this skit where one of them runs up to the gates and is like, hey, can I come in? I've almost finished my passport. And the other person snatches it and is like, huh, well, it looks like you didn't go to church and you didn't do scripture study? Guess you don't get to come into heaven. <laughs> and the girl's like banging on the gate. She's like, wait, my family's in there. Please help me, please, please. And she's like, you had the chance. And they come on stage and they're like, I hope this was a good learning lesson for you guys. It's that easy to get into heaven. You just have to do everything that you just did in this booklet. Otherwise, you never get to see your family again and you go to hell. Good night, good night, good night. That was traumatizing for me because literally I was like, we go to church maybe less than a quarter of the times that we're supposed to. I am not reading the Book of Mormon as much as I'm supposed to. And so I'd go home and I'd be like so neurotic about it. I'd be like, guys, we have to start doing family home evening. We have to start going to church. And it would literally make me spiral. That is probably my favorite girls camp experience. And that's a little taste of what I say when I mean like a lot of it is just like such a controlled environment by a group of adults for one, the most impressionable group 12 to 17 year old girls uh to the most emotional group of girls so literally like you could lose a flip-flop and we'd do a prayer about it and if you found it it would be a miracle and everybody would be crying and their heart would be touched so it does kind of give me the ick that it's such like a hyper controlled situation with such a vulnerable population but at the same time like there were things that were so fun don't get me wrong we went to water park we played tag we played hide and seek. It was cool to be able to have a sleepover with like all of my ride or dies. But at the same time, um, I would never let my kids go. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. That's a little bit of my experience. I know you guys wanted to know what it was like growing up in Utah. So that's just a little, a little sprinkle. I didn't want to get into too much because I don't want people being pissed at me. I feel like this is kind of a lighthearted topic because it's so fucking dumb. Um, so if you liked this, let me know. And if you want to see more videos about Utah life growing up in Utah, Mormonism, let me know in the comments. Hope you fucking subscribe over that because that's hard for me. Turned out really good. Look at it jiggle. <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs>